Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In Apostle Joshua Selman's enlightening message, Accessing the Power of Light, we discover how light transforms our lives. The Word of God illuminates our path, dispelling darkness. Embrace the light of Christ, which empowers and guides us. With divine light, obstacles are overcome and freedom is achieved. Worship magnifies the light within, drawing us closer to God's presence. Access the power of light and walk in divine illumination. Proximity. Proximity. And then hearing and receiving the truth. Most believers don't hear. Most believers don't receive. Most believers don't concentrate. Access to light, but then they do not receive. What is the third area? When you want to know the truth, you access the truth by the ministry of the word, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the ministry of the teaching priest. And then you hear and receive the truth, the light that is communicated. And then number three, now listen to this one. You must submit to transformation with reference to that truth. You must submit to transformation with reference to that truth. I'll take it again. Coming close to the truth and interacting with the truth is wonderful. But that does not get the job done. Hearing and listening is profitable, but that in itself does not get the job done. You must be willing to submit yourself to transformation. And I'm getting to the zenith of our discussion tonight. Transformation by the reference of that truth you have found. This is what administers liberty. I'm going to be showing you how transformation leads you to victory. But it's important, do not forget these three steps. When you find your life defeated, when you find your life miserable, if you are not saved, you already know that the first diagnosis is that I need salvation, a genuine encounter beyond a man of God, beyond a church. Then when that happens and you stop there, you say, after all, I'm born again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. An heir, as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave. Responsible parents, you will never carry, say, the key to your car. Let's assume you bought a house in the name of your child will you give the child that house at age five please talk to me will you give that child or you open an account for that child from the time the baby was born you deposited one million and you said i will keep depositing one million every year or five million every year by the time the child is 18 or 20 or 25 then i will give it to him as a gift the question is why are you not giving the child even at age 10 that child has 10 or 20 million in his account that you built for him. But you're not going to give the child. Why? Because of immaturity. Every time you are not transformed, blessings become burdens. Blessings become causes. Good things destroy when it comes into the hands of people who are not transformed. There are many of you today, you forced your way into things that you thought are blessings. But the requisite level of transformation that gives you the stamina and the stature to maximize it. You see that now? You can give your 10-year-old child a car. And that car becomes the reason why you are arrested or he's arrested or the reason why the boy is killed. And forever, if they ask you why did your child die in this example, you will live in pain. He did not die because you slaughtered him. He died because you gave him something that his growth was not yet ready for. Are you seeing that many of our prayers don't carry this illusion that just because you are talking to God, he must answer everything. Answers depend on many factors before they arrive to the saints. Among them, your level of transformation. 
Lord, give me a 500 members. And God looks at you and weighs you and says, no. The safest point for you in ministry is to have 200 members. If I give you 800 members or 1,000 members, do you have the patience? Have you grown to manage the complexities that comes with dealing with people like this? Do you understand the principles of a thousand members will usually be called from different walks of life? Do you have the intelligence to communicate truth such that everybody feels blessed? Hear me again. Without growth, blessings can become burdens. Blessings can become causes without transformation. There are many people what you have prayed for now, if God should answer it, that becomes the reason why you die. Not an attack. There are certain levels of anointings people pray carelessly for. And sometimes in church, we, God knows we, He's a merciful God. Just because you package an envelope does not mean the grace will come on you. There is a spiritual immigration system. You have to pass through it first. Are we together? There are times that you can kneel down before a man of God and say, I want double portion of your anointing. What leaves you from him is his hunger, not his anointing. It's the hunger that you get. Just because you fell down does not mean that the man and God knows that nothing came to you. It's just that he can't start explaining all that thing to you and you say, you are blessed, just go. That hunger leads you to this. Now, let me tell you this. Most believers do not know that transformation is the end point of your receiving truth. If you receive light and don't submit to the transforming power of that light, you will never be able to become what that light intended for you to be. Ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So what was the purpose of learning? Learning was supposed to bring you into an experience, but it failed to do so because the learning part, you are getting it, but you have not immersed yourself into that truth. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus Lifted up. Hallelujah. How transformation leads you to victory. Let's discuss this. How transformation, we're looking at the ministry of light. I want to show you the missing link between prophecy and your victorious life. I want to show you the reason why you keep hearing sermons and shout amen and fall while you are shouting and never become. I want to show you the hindrances, the reason why it looks like Satan remains perpetually powerful over the lives of men, families, territories. How transformation leads you to victory. Write this down. Our realities in this kingdom are shaped by our belief systems, our mindsets, and the quality of our thinking. Our realities in this kingdom is not just shaped by the love of God. Please listen. It's shaped by our belief systems, shaped by our mindsets, shaped by the quality of our thinking. You have that down? That means the reality, the definition of your Christian experience is not just a product of God's love. It's not just a product of prophecy. It's not just a product of what scripture says should be. But that your reality at any given point is a reflection of your belief system, your mindset and the quality or otherwise of your thinking. Next point. And I want you to please pay attention now. I learned this and it changed my life. I'm grateful to God for the privilege of knowing what I'm showing you now. How do you know a man is not transformed? Let me just say that. Because you will see a conflict between knowledge and the experience of his results. There is a conflict. You will not find ignorance necessarily in the equation. 
and yet you will not find the attesting results that should defend that knowledge whenever you see people who are knowledgeable and after a long period of time you cannot find the results that attest to knowledge hallelujah <laughs> I remember years ago a woman true story she complained to me that I need to pray for her child there's nothing that child does not eat including rubber a child that is growing but the child will never add weight never add weight and the woman became concerned and she said she didn't know if it was some sickness or whatever you know went to the hospital and it looked like nothing was happening honestly right from when the child was a baby she said it will suck and suck and not seem to grow looking pale and sickly and then after the child grew you know all kinds of nourishments were coming that immediately you don't need to be a doctor to know that something is wrong with that child by, by the time the child is say two three years he's still looking pale and sickly as if he's months old why is that so because the investments that support growth that the child is receiving is not producing the corresponding results are you getting that now so by the time a believer just like this example you claim to be receiving truth to be receiving light light that brings liberty truth that brings liberty but eventually no area of your life can speak the glory of God it's a sign that the missing link is not necessarily information it might be information or the quality and the kind of information but is that you've not submitted yourself to be transformed by it how transformation leads to victory I said the quality of our lives in this kingdom are shaped by our belief systems our mindsets and the quality of our thinking write this down the information that is stored in our minds are in layers the information that is stored in your mind huh? whether spiritual information or otherwise just know that the information that is stored in your mind is in layers and that they exert different levels of power and influence over our lives and our outcomes the information that is stored in our minds are in layers that means they don't hold the same strength as far as the influence that they command on our lives and they exert different levels of power over our lives and over our outcomes the average person has different kinds of information in their minds and what I'm saying is that all these informations are arranged in your mind in layers and they do not exert the same kind of power over you there are certain informations that have a greater hold of you than others. Are we together? Yes. Now listen carefully. The process of transformation is how people become changed from within. The process of transformation is how people become changed from within not outside inside from inside out i'm about to say something very powerful now and i don't want you to miss it that the process of transformation is how people become changed from inside and how does that happen second corinthians chapter 10 let's read four and five i want to show you something paul said in teaching us the dynamics of transformation for the weapons of our warfare please let me have your attention and not carnal the word carnal means man-made huh? but mighty through god is that in your bible it says to the pulling down of what what do the weapons do please talk to me they pull down they pull down what strongholds uh-huh what else do the weapons do they cast down are you seeing the, the assignment of those weapons now the weapons pull down strongholds the weapons cast down imagination what else and every high thing that exalted itself now look at me the assignment of those weapons is not necessarily to eradicate the wrong things it is the position of those information that the weapons are concerned about 
Keep that scripture there. Are we together now? The reason why they pull down the, the strongholds, the imaginations and the high thing is because those things have exalted themselves above the knowledge of Christ. Did you get that now? That means because they have exalted themselves above the knowledge of Christ, they have the strongest influence on you. So even though the knowledge of Christ is there, it is not sufficient for your life to show that you are a Christian because there are certain information that have a greater pull. Did you see that now? He said, casting down imagination and every high thing, not low thing. So it's about position. It's a high thing that exalted itself. That knowledge kept fighting its way until it became more than the it became more than the word of God in your heart. That knowledge, be it culture, be it limitation, be it demonic information, it kept growing. So when Satan wants to destroy you, he gives you access to knowledge and that knowledge keeps pushing its way until it becomes the most exalted information. And psychologists and even the Bible teaches us that your life will gravitate along your most dominant or your strongest points. Listen carefully. The weapons of our warfare they are weapons so they are not there for play and the Bible says they are not man-made the Bible says they have an assignment to number one pull down what is pull down bring it to a position where it does not exert influence and then number two is said casting down again imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge. That means the reference is the knowledge of God. Is that in your Bible? The reference is what? The knowledge of God. Hmm. And then to bring into captivity every thought. What weapons? So when those weapons get into you, huh? they are like what your white blood cells do. Look at me from a medical standpoint. When somebody breaks down and they take his blood samples and they say you are sick, does that remove white blood cells from your life? It's just that they were not strong enough to fight what is fighting you and you will need help, you will need aid. Is that true? But sometimes you live so healthy and they can tell you eat fruits, eat this and you can be so strong for a long time you've not fallen sick. It didn't mean the sickness did not come around you but you have maintained a position of health are you getting that point now? Did the Bible not say they are life to those who find and health? Hmm. Hmm. Casting down every high thing. So how does transformation happen? This entire four and five is how transformation happens. Transformation is warfare. Transformation is not a journey of intelligence. It's a journey of warfare. Because there are certain information programmed by Satan and systems and structures to sit with that regardless the potential of the life you have received, that your life keeps failing perpetually. My God, listen, it is because of this that we can have with all due respect a very, very intelligent person. Have you seen brilliant people who are poor? Brilliant people who are mediocre? Because it's not what they read that is controlling their lives. It's the most dominant thoughts. That's why a man can be a lecturer and suffer what he's teaching. His problem is not ignorance. His problem is that the, the information controlling his life is not academics. It's his most dominant thoughts. If that person believes he's a failure, even as a professor, his knowledge, even if he's teaching CRK, he will still fail. Hmm. Are we learning? So transformation happens by pulling down strongholds. Transformation happens by casting down imaginations. Watch this. Transformation happens by pulling any information and any reasoning that fights to be higher than the knowledge of God. Everything that fights to be higher than scripture is your enemy. Now, 
there are informations that are not bad is what you need to do is regulate their position like what you studied what you studied is not demonic but the moment it contains the word of god it can still be there some of those things are not to be removed they are to be dethroned because the influence they are exerting upon your life will not allow the reality of eternal life to find expression so it is not a journey to become a dummy it is a journey to exalt the word of god and bring it to a position in your life are we together now where when you look at the life of that individual you see the excellency of the word regardless your profession regardless whatever it is that you're doing now the challenge with many believers is that when they got born again they did not know that before they received eternal life there was already a bank of error error that came through demonic activities watch this now error that came as a result of maybe negative sides of culture error that came as a result of suggestions error that came as a result of mistakes in our carrying out our priesthood probably you did not have the honor and the privilege of sitting under an accurate teaching priest and there were many things you believed you carried a backlog of information that was not true light when you get born again it is not God's responsibility to remove those things out. It is God's responsibility to give you the grace. It's called the enabling grace. And you through discipline, are we together? Discipline and vision, you partner with your destiny by carrying out this warfare. The real warfare is not casting out devils. The real warfare is these dethronements that need to happen. Now look up please. When an armed robber steals, I've taught you here who is stealing it's not the person the person was born an innocent baby why did he become an armed robber because there were thoughts that were exalted are we together now in that person's lifetime he had heard that being kind is good in that person's lifetime he had heard that if you steal you will go to prison why is he still stealing he's not unaware of the fact that he's going to go to jail he's not unaware of the fact that if you kill somebody and they catch you you can stay there for life why does he still go to, to steal because there is another information that tells him that if you follow the way of dignity you cannot grow and so the easiest way is to steal kill and destroy stop a luxurious boss and you can become a millionaire overnight and that information has exalted itself against every advice his parents gave him and that's what governs his life so just because you are coming to church it is not the sermon you are hearing that will change your life it is what dominates your mind There are many ungodly songs that don't make sense. You never learn them by rehearsing them. You learn them by allowing their influence through reputation. And one day when they start singing, you were joining too. You didn't know when you were joining. You, ah, God forgive me, but you still joined. It started in the Babin Saloon. Huh? Then it went somewhere while you were waiting for your car to be full. Several things. Listen. If you don't understand why the Bible says, let this mind be in you. He was not speaking to unbelievers, which was in Christ Jesus. There was a mindset. Do you know why Jesus protected his mind from age 12? Because he did not have control when he became the flesh, in the flesh, over everything that happened in his upbringing. But the moment he grew up, I hope you know at the point where Jesus came, the Jews were slaves under the captivity of Rome. There was a mindset Joseph had and Mary had. They could not train a savior with that mindset. As much as they were good parents, they could not raise a savior with that mindset. And so Jesus respected them, but he went to the temple and he sat down with the scribes. Even though the scribes and the Pharisees were not, but they were the closest people to having access to scripture. He needed to find out from scripture what was said about him and he still made do with them from age 12. And when they came and met him and said, you have been looking for you, he said, do you not know I should be about my father's business? 
What was he doing? For 18 years, it is written. For 18 years, finding where it was written, lo, I come in the volume of the book. You think the Holy Ghost just gave him? No. Jesus, the word, as the logos of God, took the discipline of asking questions. Scribes and Pharisees, tell us what they said would happen when the Messiah comes. And while they were saying it, he was finding out about himself. Listen carefully. Let me teach you something, ladies and gentlemen. I hope God is speaking to you. <laughs> Some of you are looking with shock. Um, what you are hearing is the truth. Now listen. You see, when you contend for transformation by the word of God, do you know how transformation leads to victory? It leads to victory by doing two things. Number one, transformation leads to victory by empowering you to make superior destiny advancing choices and decisions. The first way transformation leads to victory is by empowering the transformed to make superior destiny advancing choices and decisions so the first area where you see the value of transformation is in the quality of your choices and your decisions i'll take that again that transformation translates to victory by empowering the transformed to make superior destiny advancing choices and decisions ah this is powerful write this and look up let me teach you something imagine Put two believers like this. Just use your mind. I don't want to call people up because of time. Imagine brother A standing by my left. Imagine brother B standing by my right. You have that in your mind? Imagine that brother A is a Christian but does not know anything about prayer. Does not know anything about relationships. Does not know anything about the value of productivity. Look at me please. Does not know anything about the law of honor. Does not know anything about the power of prophecy. Look how disadvantaged this our brother is. Is he a Christian? Yes. How many destiny helpers can he attract to his life with this kind of mindset? He does not know the value of honor. So when God sends a good man, he will insult them and recycle pain in his life and say, why is my life like this? His life is a reflection of an omission, something he does not know. When they say, lift your hands and receive, he say, what is there? Do words really matter? And this guy remains. The door that should be open for him cannot be open because when prophetic help comes, he does not have an understanding that has shown him the value of this. Let me tell you the truth. Failure does not just happen. Failure looks for a mindset to partner with for failure to manifest. It's just that the mindset is subconsciously built. So the victim who is failing does not know that he labored to create a mindset for spirits to produce failure. Are we together? Quality choices and quality decisions. You know the level of transformation that is working in your mind by the kinds of choices that you make. I'm feeling tired and sleepy for no reason. Should I really come to church? No. That is a mindset that has advised you to behave that way. Am I right on that? You wind your hand and you slap your wife. I've taught you it's not your hand that slapped the wife. It's a mindset that says by slapping your wife she will respect you and you obeyed the mindset and acted it. Are we together now? When a child becomes stubborn, returns home one o'clock, and they say, where are you coming from? He say, I'm not a child, though. Huh? I'm a big boy. That definition of big boy did not come from the dictionary. That definition of big boy came from something social media or society gave him. Am I right on that? And he decided to adopt that definition. Do you think there, there's no small Bible study in that child's brain? There's still Bible study in that child's brain. His John 3.16 of Sunday school is still there. It's just that there's no sufficient truth to gain dominance over everything that fights him. Most people do not know that transformation is warfare. A warfare to dethrone thoughts, 
reasonings, mindsets, information that fight your destiny, that fight your greatness. I'm about to say something very powerful that I want you to listen to. We convert transformation to victory by its empowerment or, or a transformation leads to victory and liberty by empowering the saints to make superior destiny advancing choices and decisions. Now listen please. How does transformation by light lead to liberty? This right here that I'm about to teach you is the most important information that brought us here tonight. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May your eyes be open. Amen. Say amen. amen. Help us Holy Spirit. Now listen. <laughs> Thoughts, mindsets, and belief systems have an energy that they emit. Listen please. Thoughts, mindsets, and belief systems, they exhibit magnetic properties. Hear this again. Thoughts, mindsets, belief systems, reasonings, they have an energy. Every single one of them has an energy that they emit from within you to your environment. They exhibit magnetic properties. They attract to your life. Listen, people, they attract to your life conditions they attract to your life circumstances consistent with that belief. This is very powerful. I want to show you how transformation leads to victory and how lack of it keeps you in defeat. That thoughts, mindsets, information generally, they have power. There is an energy that comes from them. Are we together now? And that they exhibit magnetic properties that when trouble comes to you and keeps coming to you you may not believe it but there is something within you magnetizing trouble job said let me show you a scripture job chapter 3 and verse 25 the thing that i greatly feared that was not the only thing he feared but the one he greatly feared was the one that came did you get that job had other fears but the one that was the most dominant fear, read it with me, one to go. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. This is the mystery of deep calling unto deep. That Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.